basically all the cooking and definitely do all the shopping. When Carla wants something, she lets me know, she puts it on my iPhone, and within a couple of days, she gets it. <laughs> if I see that her clothes is wearing out, I say, Carla, let's go, time to buy some more clothes, we go, she tries them on, I go to the cashier, we pay for it. <laughs> She wants a Kindle, Amazon Kindle, I said, perfect honey, don't no worry, I'll get it, go on the internet, buy it, she gets it. I want a car, she doesn't like it, I go by myself, look at it, I get it. <laughs> I get to spend the money. One of the things that happens to me regularly is that I go to Costco. And when I go to look for detergent, what I'm looking for in my detergent is one thing. That it says, Tide Original Scent. That's all I want from a detergent. That it says, Tide Original Scent. Don't give me any other thing. You know, don't give me the whole with what from Breeze or with no, no, no. Just give me my Tide Original Scent. And I'm happy. <laughs> If I don't buy that Costco, I won't buy anything. I will get in my car, and if necessary, I will travel to Sands Club in Concord to see if they have it. If they don't have it, I'll leave there, and I'll go to every Target and Walmart I can find to see if they have it. And if they don't have it, I'll wait until somebody gets it. I will not buy anything else. And this is what I have been doing since 1997. I go to the store, and when I look for detergent, I want Thai original scent. The funny thing is that people keep telling me, it's only detergent. They all do the same thing. And I say, I don't care. Give me my Thai original scent, and I'm fine. <laughs> When I go visit my sister in Atlanta, guess what? She uses me. Powder. Ugh. <laughs> if we stay for a long time, sometimes I'm actually tempted to go to the supermarket, and I see it, and I'm like, take it. But my sister will be really mad if I go by and turn you behind her back. So I leave. <coughs> but the temptation is there to get me a bottle original set time, so I can wash my clothes the way I like it. Yes, they are all detergent. They're exactly the same. But I have labeled detergent with the word time, and for me, nothing else qualifies but that. If it were only with detergent and products we get in the supermarket, with which we did that, then it'll be fine. But we do it regularly with each other. We label each other in a different way. For example, there is this image of a, of a perfect person. Let me start with the male. The perfect man is just around six feet tall. He's white. He weighs about 175 pounds, short hair, well shaped, no mustache, no beard, get it? That's not neat. Um, he goes to a perfect school, does not get perfect grades because perfect grades will be the sure win. Okay? You can't get perfect, you have to be good with not perfect grades. Then you have to get the right job, perfect job. You have to buy the right car. You have to marry the right, the right woman, which also is white, just about five, six, so you can look down on her. Now get to women in a minute. Then you have your perfect kids, male and female, in that order. In that order, male, then female. The other way around, make sure that you're not perfect anymore. You buy the right food at the right stores, you dress in the proper way, walk in a certain way, if you look in a certain way, you speak in a certain way. The woman, perfect at about age 20. 
Before that, you know what you're doing. After that, you're going down. I'm 30. I'm 30. You go to school so that you can say that you went to school. Not that you're looking for a job. You go to school. You make sure you have a perfect kitchen. Because that's what you're there for. To cook the perfect meal for your perfect family. Then when your perfect husband comes home, you're there waiting for him at the door with a martini. So that he can sit and have his perfect meal at the perfect time with the perfect family. And everybody watches the perfect TV shows and goes to them at the perfect time. Yes, I know that it sounds strange. We don't live in that world anymore, apparently. But it seems to me that in our heads, it is still an image that we bear. It is still something that we carry in our heads. And even if we are black, Asian, short, tall, in many ways, we still see ourselves trying to strive to achieve that, that image or that label of what is perfect. We spend thousands, millions, billions of dollars on diet things and exercise machines and this and the other, many times not because we think we want to be healthy, but we want to have that perfect picture of what it means to be the perfect person. We want to drive the right car because that way people look at us in a certain way. The brother, my brother was just three years older than me. I was talking to him the other day. He was talking about buying a car. He's a lawyer. And he said, you know, I need to get either a BMW or Mercedes Benz. And I, you know, I bought him on some. Uh, Mont Blanc pens, so he wears it. It says, only with the car and the pen, I can get any client I want. Because in people's minds, there's an image of what a successful lawyer looks like. You can be very successful, but if you come around rubbing the hunting, nobody wants you to be their representative. Because something has to be wrong if you're not showing your wealth off. We have images and labels we put on ourselves and on other people. The problem is that when we do that, we miss the point. Because we miss the essence of what it means to be a human being. Just like how we miss the essence of what a detergent is supposed to be doing. We miss that part of us that is more like God than anything else we are. Think of it. We are made in the image of God. Do you really think that God has a body like ours that is going to wrinkle, wither, die, and make food for worms? Do you really think that that is a part of us that is most like God? I would beg to differ. The part of us that is like God, that is in God's image, is that four letter word that we so try to hide? S O U L. Our souls. Our souls, which is the essence of who we are, is the part of us that is more like God. That is the part of us that lives on forever. That is the eternal portion of our being. The lives we live right here. This is a shell of packaging in which the soul is allowed to live. However, we spend a lot of time and a lot of money trying to label and regularize the shell. And not enough time trying to understand and nurture the soul, the eternal. We spend billions of dollars trying to tell people how they should and should not live in the shell. And we constantly, more and more, are trying to have people not talk about the part of it that is even more essential and more delicate. Jesus says to us, don't fear the one who can destroy the body. Fear the one who can destroy the soul. Because whether we like it or not, the body is going to end. Whether it be today or in a hundred years, the body.